chapter 6, Mishnah 8. This mission discusses milk, which includes milk from an animal and milk from a woman. We have mentioned throughout the tractate that a liquid cannot cause hechsher unless a person was pleased when it detached from its source, or when it wetted the food. This Mishnah teaches that milk is an exception to this rule, and cites a, dispate, a debate whether the exception applies to all milk or only the milk of a woman. The milk of a woman makes food subject to tuma, i.e. it is a liquid that causes hechsher, whether the woman was pleased with it or not pleased with it. But the milk of an animal makes food subject to tuma if a person was pleased with it, only if a person was pleased with it. Another opinion. Rabbi Akiva said there should be no difference between milk of a woman and milk of an animal with regard to the above law, and the matter can be proven through a call of a chomer. Logical argument as follows. If the milk of a woman, which is intended only for children, makes food subject to tuma, whether she was pleased or not pleased with it, is it not logical that animal milk, which is intended for both children and adults, should make food subject to tuma, whether one was pleased or not pleased with it? Since more people drink animal milk than woman milk, animal milk is a more significant drink. If woman's milk can cause hechsher, even if one is not pleased with it, animal milk certainly can. The sages respond to Rabbi Akiva. The sages said to him, no, that is not a valid argument. Although the milk of a woman makes food subject to tuma, even if it did not please her, that is because the blood of her wound makes food subject to tuma. Will the milk of an animal that did not please its owner make food subject to tuma when the blood of its wound is kahor, i.e. it does not cause hechsher? In other words, one cannot compare the milk of an animal to the milk of a woman. The reason a woman's milk causes hechsher, even if one was not pleased with it, is because it is like the blood of her wound. Blood from a person's wound causes hechsher, even though a person is generally not pleased when he has a bleeding wound. Since milk is created by the body's blood, milk shares this law and also causes hechsher even when one is not pleased with it, even if one is not pleased with it. The same does not apply to animal milk, though, because blood from an animal's wound does not cause hechsher at all. Therefore, there is no reason for its milk to cause hechsher when one is not pleased with it. Rabbi Kiva responds. Rabbi Kiva said to the sages, I am more strict regarding an animal's milk than I am regarding the blood of, a, of its wound. For if one milks an animal for health reasons, the milk is tame, i.e. So it causes hechsher. But if one lets blood from an animal for health reasons, the blood is tahor, i.e. does not cause hechsher. Evidently, the law of an animal's milk cannot be derived from the law of its blood. To the contrary, the law for milk is stricter. Thus, an animal's milk can cause hechsher, even if one is not pleased with it, even though its blood does not cause hechsher that way. The sages respond. The sages said to Rabbi Akiva, the law concerning baskets of olives and grapes will prove that a liquid that pleases its owner is not the same as a liquid that does not please him. For the law is that liquid coming from the grapes of, or olives that the owner is pleased with is tame. But if he is not pleased with the liquid, it is tahor. Likewise, all liquids, including animal milk, cause hechsher only when the owner is pleased with them, with the exception of a woman's milk and blood from a person's wound, as explained above. Rabbi Akiva answers, he said to the sages, No, baskets of olives or grapes do not prove your point, for they are an exception. Although you say that the owner's pleasure is needed for juice from baskets or olives and grapes, that is because their juice was at first considered a food while it was inside the grape or olive, and in the end it is considered a liquid after it oozes out. Because it was originally food and not a liquid, this juice cannot be considered a liquid to cause hechsher unless its owner is pleased with it being a liquid. But you will say the same about animal milk, which is a liquid from beginning to end. But will you say the same about animal milk, which is a liquid from beginning to end? Since this milk was always a liquid, it can cause hechsher even if its owner is not pleased with it. Thus, the fact that the liquids oozing from olives and grapes do not cause hechsher unless their owner is pleased with them does not prove that the same is true about animal milk. Until here was the response. That is, this is the end of the debate between Rabbi Akiva and the sages. The next Tana holds that the debate between Rabbi Akiva and the sages continues. Rabbi Shimon said, from here on, we would answer in Rabbi Akiva's presence as follows. As you said, juice of olives and grapes do not prove that animal milk cannot cause hechsher if its owner is not pleased with it. However, rainwater will prove that a person's pleasure is always needed for a liquid to cause hechsher, for it is a liquid from beginning to end, and yet it does not make food subject to tuma unless a person was pleased with it. This shows that even liquids that were always liquids, such as animal milk, cause hechsher only when the owner is pleased with them. Rabbi Kiva's response. Rabbi Kiva said to us, 
Not so. Rainwater does not prove your point, because it doeth an exception, although you say that the owner's pleasure is needed for rainwater. That is because most rainwater is not for the benefit of people, but for the benefit of land and trees. Therefore, it is not considered a beverage, i.e., a liquid that people drink, unless a person shows that he is pleased with it. However, most milk is for the benefit of people, and it is therefore automatically considered a beverage, which can cause heksher, even if its owner is not pleased with it.